Now, folks, it's 2.50, and to finish the show, we're going to have our Campus Clash segment about gender neutrality. This is the idea that policies, language, and other social institutions should avoid distinguishing roles according to people's sex or gender. Today's debate question is gender neutral, the future. Now, I'm joined by Jess Gale, a prospective philosophy, politics and economics student, and Durham Law School student, Amia Doabia. Now, Jess, can I start with you, please? Gender neutral, this is the future, right? We need to just get with the times and accept gender neutral bathrooms, changing rooms and all the rest of it, because this is the way in which we're all going now. I, I don't think gender neutral is the way forward. This isn't to say that men and women shouldn't be tre- treated with the same amount of respect or shouldn't be treated the same amount, like, fairly. This is just simply acknowledging there's differences between men and women. Look at um, Leah Thomas with the sports um, swimming championships in the US. There's so clear there's a biological difference there, and that's why we have separate categories. But also on the matter of women's safety and even men's comfortableness and safety as well. If we have gender neutral spaces in domestic violence centres, in women's prisons, on which oftentimes these women are victims of male abuse, we're putting these women at risk and we're not making them feel comfortable. Yeah. I mean, that for what you've listening to what Jess had to say there, do you actually think this is the future and that, you know, those that are standing saying, well, hang on a minute, I actually think that we need to protect these sex segregated spaces and sex segregated institutions, in fact, are just behind the times? Um, so the first point would be the key word over here is gender, which isn't sex. So gender is much broader. Gender is how someone identifies and then expresses themselves externally. So someone could identify as male, female. They could identify as both or they could identify as neither. So it's important that the future is gender inclusive. And to be truly gender inclusive, we would have to be gender neutral. I don't disagree that there are um, majority of victims of domestic violence, for example, are females, or um, that a lot of professional fields are dominated by certain genders. But the key word over here is the future. So in the future, someone's opportunities that they receive or the decision that someone makes shouldn't be um, biased or seen through the lens of the gender uh, to their gender so the future should be gender neutral whereas in the present we would need to make changes to ensure that we can offer everyone a gender neutral future so if i tomorrow decide that darren is now doreen do i have the right to walk into the women's toilets right now is that what you're saying not right now it depends on how you identify at that point of time you said right in the future if you identify as female um there are gender neutral toilets available in Durham university for example where i study where it's a safe space for anyone who doesn't identify as male or female and there is an option for them um to have a gender neutral space with that regard so jess i'm doreen now and i walk into the females toilets where you just happen to be doing your makeup in the mirror or something like that would you feel okay with that I wouldn't feel okay with that, and I know plenty of other women who wouldn't feel okay with that. I think a lot of women aren't speaking out about this because, A, they don't realise the implications. They just think having gender having a definition, different definition to sex is just respecting someone's pronouns. Of course, everyone wants to be treated and treat everyone with respect, but it comes to a point where women's safety and women and men's uncomfortableness comes into place with these situations. When you go into a women's toilet, you consent to being in an area with only women and when you have this fluid definition of gender you're not respecting that you're not respecting people's consent yeah can i just ask the two of you really quickly there because we're wrapping up the end of the show unfortunately but do you think that people are jumping on a bandwagon essentially on this debate and and actually amongst young people that is what's responsible for more people actually coming out and saying, well, hang on a minute, I think I'm experiencing gender dysphoria here. And that's why we're having this conversation. Is that a good thing that more people are saying, yep, I've got gender dysphoria, this is my diagnosis? Jess? I don't think so. I think people should be comfortable with who they are. Of course, if you're a feminine man or a masculine woman, that doesn't mean you're a different gender. That just means you're expressing yourself in a different way. And that shouldn't be like discouraged. Everyone should express themselves in a different way. Amia? 
I don't think anyone needs to fit into a box that's been set out for them. If someone wants to explore out of that box, it's important they have the right and the freedom to do so. Well, that was Jess Gill and Amir Doabia there. Thank you very much from Durham Law School. You've been watching Real Britain with me, Darren Grimes. Thank you for doing so.